Hello. Welcome to the tutorial on how to use Unity 3D Prefab Workflow. Prefabs in Unity are pre-configured reusable game objects that you create in the scene and store in the project. Prefabs have many uses and are a vital part of development in Unity. Let's say you have a situation wherein you are required to have multiple copies of a game object in your Unity project. Now if you create individual instances, this would produce duplicates which are independently editable. Generally, you want all instances of a particular object to have the same properties, so when you edit one object in the scene, you would prefer not to have to make the same edit repeatedly to all the copies. Unity has a prefab asset type that allows you to store a game object object complete with components and properties. The prefab acts as a template from which you can create new object instances in the scene. Any edits made to a prefab asset are immediately reflected in all instances produced from it, but you can also override components and settings for each instance individually. This would save a lot of time. To make a prefab, you create the game object in its desired configuration in the scene using whatever components you need. You then drag it into the project window to save it as a prefab in your project. Once created, you can instantiate and clone your prefabs that is create an instance of them at runtime. We will take a case to understand better how prefabs are created. We create a game object by going to game object then 3D object then cylinder. The game object is visible in the hierarchy view. If I were to create a prefab of this cylinder, I need to drag this game object from hierarchy view to project view like so. So now our cylinder prefab is created and stored in project. Objects created as prefab instances will be shown in the hierarchy view in blue text as you can see here. If you drag a different game object onto the prefab, you will be asked if you want to replace your current game object with the new one. Simply dragging the prefab asset from the project view to the scene view will then create instances of the prefab. Once you have made a prefab, you can delete it from the hierarchy and use it anywhere within your Unity project. The inspector for a prefab instance has three buttons not present for a normal object, select, revert, and apply. The select button selects the prefab asset from which the instance was generated. This allows you to edit the main prefab and thereby change all its instances. The changes to the prefab asset itself will be reflected in all instances, but you can also modify individual instances separately. This is useful when you want to create several similar objects, but introduce variations to make them more realistic. To make it clear when a property has been overridden, it is shown in the inspector with its name label in boldface. In our example, the cylinder game object has component capsule collider which is used for collision detection. If I set the astrigger component of the prefab instance to false then I can see here in inspector that the property becomes boldfaced. Alternatively, if I click on overrides button you can see only those game objects whose one or more properties have been overridden. So if I click on the component, you can see two sections, one being the prefab source component and other being the override component. We can see the is trigger property is boldfaced. When a completely new component is added to a prefab instance, all of its properties will be shown in boldface. You can save overridden values from an instance back to the originating prefab using the apply button. This effectively lets you edit all instances, except those which override the value changed, via any single instance and is a very quick and convenient way to make global changes. If you experiment with overriding properties but then decide you preferred the default values, you can use the revert button to realign the instance with its prefab. Modified transform position and rotation values are excluded for obvious reasons. To open and edit an existing prefab there is a dedicated prefab editing mode that allows you to open and edit prefabs in isolation. There are two ways to enter prefab mode. One double click a prefab in the project window. Second if your prefab is part of the current scene, you'll see a small arrow next to the game object in the hierarchy. Clicking that also enters prefab mode. 
Once created we can use prefabs to instantiate complicated game objects at runtime. Like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel for more fun videos and stay tuned for more.